I'm Katie Coggers, and I'm at the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. I help out with the imaging and microscopy, and then I also work on genotyping. So I grew up in Richmond, Virginia, and as a kid, I was not great at math and science or like reading. I wasn't, like, I, I just couldn't understand it. But in middle school, I really started falling in love with science because I realized that I could explain things around the world that I'd never, that I'd never known why they happen, like uh, why water boils, like where the air comes from, you know, when it bubbles out of the water because, you know, there's no gas when you look at it. And then all of a sudden it gets hot enough and then, you know, the bubbles start going. And so that's when I really started to fall in love with science when I realized that science could tell me why those things were happening and then help me like predict when they would happen or to what extent. And I started research like kind of on a whim and I really fell in love with it. I really liked it because it's something different every day. It fits within a larger context of humans understanding the way the world is and the way our bodies work. We're looking at alcoholism and alcohol abuse. There's a lot of factors that go into that that people don't understand just yet. And so there's the huge nature versus nurture debate. And so we're kind of more on the nature side of things. What we're looking at right now is kind of like the genetic background of alcoholism and how genes can contribute to alcoholism developing. We're using a technique which is very advanced and uh, very exciting that uses lasers to control behavior. We basically implant a light sensitive protein into neurons, which are brain cells essentially. And so by turning on a light, we can kind of like a light switch actually, turn the neurons on and off. And so this is um, a blue frequency. We also have green which can activate a different channel and kind of produce a different behavioral response. For microscopy, we use the fluorescent microscopy, which is basically glow in the dark. Like when you turn off the lights in one of those rooms with the stars on the ceiling, that's kind of like the same thing because it glows without the light actually being on. And so the molecules that we have that we're attaching are fluorescent. And so when they attach to these proteins of interest, you know, the proteins that we want, they can glow. And so we can tell where these proteins are and in, in what number. For genotyping, I use a technique called polymerase chain reaction. The first part of polymerase chain reaction, which is the way that you can multiply DNA so you can tell if there's a gene of interest in a sample, typically you have to know whether the gene of interest is there or not. Within any given test subject, is you start with the thermocycler, which is over here actually. And so this machine goes through many different temperatures, which helps with the DNA amplification. After that's reaction is completed. Then we use it in the gel because DNA is actually negatively charged. And so if you run electricity, the DNA will naturally go towards the positive charge. The way that DNA is separated on this gel is by size. The smaller pieces of DNA move a bit faster in the gel and the larger pieces of DNA take a longer time. And so the larger pieces of DNA are going to be closer to where the sample started. This one, this gene actually that I'm testing for is a fluorescent gene that's been inserted into the neurons. And so this is determining whether their neurons will be fluorescent or not. We know so little about how the brain responds to addiction and what changes in the brain can lead to addiction. And I think understanding those underlying processes are going to help us to eventually help people overcome addiction um, because addiction is really a disease. Every day you're kind of learning that we don't know this, but it could actually really help humans if we did. And so that's what uh, our jobs as scientists are, is to help people 
people aren't just gonna hand you things generally. Like I know that's probably what happens in like TV shows and the movies. Like somebody's discovered all of a sudden, just you know, walking down the street. But that that's not how life is. Nobody would have given me a position in a research lab just being like, she looks like she could be good at research. Um, I had to go to my professor and ask, hey, are there any positions in your lab or do you know of any labs that do have positions because I'm very interested. Being your own advocate is a very important thing to learn in any career path uh, and it, it's definitely helped me in science so far. <laughs>